So, hey everybody, it's Blast Raider. We're back with another video. And today we're looking at a boomer website called 50 Cal Terror. Yeah, brought to you from the same people who brought you wonderful classics such as Rock and Rolls of the Devil, Comic Books are of the Devil, Video Games are of the Devil, D&D is of the Devil, today 50 Cal are of the Devil. So, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I'm being facetious on this, but this is actually the same type of people you're dealing with. Uh, ignorant, uneducated people who are talking about something they know nothing about. And when I say ignorant and uneducated, what I mean is they see something and they automatically assume, because they don't understand it, that it's wrong. You had this concept happen when trading cards come out. Uh, one of the big things was, this is a gateway into tarot card reading and witchcraft. It's basically where kids were running around, you know, playing Pokemon battle games. There's, a, It's a game. It has rules, and it has rules and everything. And you're just doing what the card says on the game. It's basically your instructions are in the cards. You just determine what rules to take effect at what time. It's one of the reasons why card games are so popular is you can, you literally can build decks. Uh, I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a kid. And one of the things about Yu-Gi-Oh! was you could have decks that could do anything. I mean, there was actually a set of five cards that said when you got all five cards, you win the game. <laughs> That's all you had to do. You know, there were kids that had... And that that card got outlawed from the game at some point because kids were building entire decks based around that one... Based around just those five cards to get them out there faster. But anyway... Let's take a look at this page here because this this actually shows how much I didn't think you could pack this much stupid into so many words, <laughs> so few words. But here we go. This is apparently from New Jersey. This apparently uh, came from a guy in New Jersey. Apparently, I guess law-abiding fifty cal gun owner has a bad day. Godzilla's gun. No, it's it's, it's really not. <laughs> you want Godzilla's gun? That's probably the deck guns on the USS Missouri. But anyway. <clears throat> Columnist, new terrorism calls for a new gun ban. As usual, we're not going to understand what we're banning. We're just going to get rid of it. <clears throat> we're not going to understand rock and roll. We're just going to get rid of it. Uh, things that people don't realize. The more that you, you try to hamper stuff like this, it's it's called the, I call it the boyfriend, I call it the girl, the mother-daughter effect would be the best way to term it. Because you usually you have like a crazy Karen mom who doesn't like the boyfriend. And so she does everything she can to break up the daughter and the boyfriend. But all that does is it causes the daughter who, this is, you know, naturally, when people are in love, they cling to each other. It causes the daughter to cling to the boyfriend. And yeah, he may be a scumbag, but she will never see him as a scumbag so long as her mom is a bigger threat to her and causes her more problems than the boyfriend's doing. Sometimes you just got to step back and let the guy screw himself up. It, it can be done. Same thing with gun owners. They'll, they'll, they'll show their hand very quickly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny how this starts. For the uninundated. Meaning for those who don't know. For those who don't know anything about it. We're, we're the expert. That's what they're trying to say here. They're trying to say we're the expert. In two, it's like three words. that are already trying to make themselves sound smarter than they really are. The 50 cal rifle which the legislature is now considering bills to ban, is akin to those tripod-mounted numbers from World War II movies, where soldiers fed long strings of ammo. Okay, number one, no. The only thing that's similar between the 50 cal, uh, from the, the rifle that you've got right here, and the M2 heavy machine gun, is the M2 heavy machine gun is meant for squad suppression. And dealing with large numbers of lightly armored vehicles and things of that nature. The 50 cal rifle is just a much longer... Because you've got a bigger bullet and bigger powder, you can hurl the sucker out there at a much longer range. It also has an effective use as an anti-material and anti-cover system. In other words, if a guy's hiding behind a concrete wall, uh, it's like probably a, maybe half a foot thick. You're not going to be able to just send a rifle round or send like some 556 five, into the wall and take him out. You're going to eat through that wall before you get to it. Uh, 50 cal, however, you can get a general idea of where he's at 
boom, pop one shot off the round will punch clean through the wall, hit the guy on the other side and kill him. It also has an effective use for, you know, taking out radar installations, um, any kind of what, what would be considered a medium hardness asset, such as a helicopter. Say, say you've got a sniper out in the middle. This is the best example. Say you've got a sniper out there and he's looking at a group of Spetsnaz who's fixing to take off in their hindy tricked out attack helicopter. It's got the 20 millimeter buffers on the nose. It's got multiple rockets and heat seeking weapon systems. It's got door mounted Dylan mini guns for strafing soldiers. And they're, this small team of Spetsnaz are about to take off and go pick a fight with a bunch of uh, Marines out there and really ruin their day about their cracking Haji skulls. You got one Army Ranger out there with a 50 cal rifle. He doesn't need an incendiary round or anything like that. He just aims for the engine of the aircraft, puts a round through it, and that disables the engine entirely. Suddenly your Spetsnaz are now grounded. All that weaponry they have on that helicopter is useless <laughs> because one crazy dude with a rifle just took it out. So it's very good for anti-material operations. Now, mind you, that's usually to remove a target from getting up off, or preventing something like that from getting up off the ground. A single guy with a rifle can start smacking aircraft and stuff if you can get him close enough to the area. And he can take out the radar system. He can take out their radios. He can knock out every single aircraft on the field and make them all worthless, pretty much, to where the system won't turn on because the engine is, because sensors are detecting there's something wrong with the engines. Uh, you can do that. The difference between this and a, a 50 cal machine gun is the 50 cal machine gun, you fire it, the purpose of it is to reach out at a distance and hit hardened structures, tear through all kinds of cover, but it's designed for dealing with mass quantities of people, usually. That's what you use a 50 cal for. Uh, the idea is to hit them at long range, and then your 762s, and then your 556s, and it just stares down the the ranges as they get closer you are going to get more and more lead fired at you because you've got one group of guys that specialize in the 50 cal you've got the next set of guys be your machine gunners that specialize in like the 762 uh machine belt fed machine guns and then you get down to the grunts who all have 556 five, and so you're dealing with 50s first you're de then the the uh Light machine gunners join the fight, and then the riflemen join the fight if they're not capable of getting out there to you already, which most rifles can usually reach about a thousand yards out anyway. Yeah, I'm throwing a lot of ballistics. <laughs> ballistics is ballistics. It's a very interesting subject. Things go up, things go down. <laughs> it's just fascinating. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on. Nobody's going to hold up a 7-Eleven with a 50 cal rifle. Concedes Brian Miller, executive director of Ceasefire New Jersey. I'm not saying that they won't. I, I'm I'm not saying they can't. I'm just saying most of them don't want to. It's not a very, it's not economically feasible. And you'll see how stupid this is here in a minute. We're talking about terrorists. In the wrong hands, this weapon can be loaded into a pickup truck and fired from as far as a mile away. Fired at a chemical plant, nuclear facility, oil refinery, or any type of installation that could blow up or release deadly toxins. <laughs> that was apparently an add-on, that last bit. But let's let's finish up with this guy's quote here, where he talks about uh, loading the weapon into a pickup. He is right. You can fire the gun from about a mile away. Uh, some guys have even taken 50 cal and achieved 2 mile. There's a competition called the King of 2 Mile where guys go out there and they compete against each other to see who can... I think the rules of the shoot is you have to hit every single target up to two miles, which is apparently the max range of the 50 cal. Uh, some guys have done it. Some guys have gone the distance out there, and it's very, very, very difficult. We're talking guys who, have, who go out there and train on their rifles like Olympic pole vaulters train with a piece of wood okay they go out there costly they they have they have shot this thing so much their hands have reached levels of control in their fingers that are just not seen by normal man all right 
their their guns are fine tuned. They've got the best scopes. They've got and you're talking at two miles. You're talking they're hitting targets out there that look like the size of a pin on the scope, and they're trying to hit that. Like tiny, tiny, little, little bitty things out there. Pretty good size target, regular size man targets, but they're tiny when they get out there. They don't make, in fact, there is not a scope uh, with lens systems that is powerful enough to reach out past a mile. Uh, at that point, you have to get to electronic scopes, and that's what the military is looking at now. They're looking at electronic uh, spectrograph scopes, I think is what they are. That Literally, this thing will reach, will zoom itself in with a camera, will just zoom in there and filter stuff until it reaches where you need it to be at, and then it will tell you how where to lift your rifle up and to get it on target. They already make a scope that makes you a better shooter. What they're talking about is a scope where the guy's not even looking through a lens and seeing the, the light filter through a lens. He's just looking at a computer screen on his... He's just Basically, it's a computer screen mounted to the top of a, a really high-quality camera. Similar like the Hubble. Hubble telescope, only much, much, much smaller. Um, you can reach out to a mile, but it's not something that's easy to do. It's not something that doesn't require a shit ton of training and this is where we're going to we're going to see uh when I make my third point here you're going to see the logistics of this is just really stupid but getting back in there he acts like this is a gun that you load in the back of a pickup truck uh no it's not a can well yeah technically it is a cannon but it's not a black powder cannon all right black powder cannons you have to load them up in the back of a truck and everything he acts like you've got to put this thing in there and strap it down you you pop two pins on the damn thing. Take the try not to have the spring break your finger when you take it apart. Put the fifty cal into a case. It's about the size of a regular rifle case. It'll just barely fit into. And then just put it in the back seat of your car or the trunk of your car. And you you can take it wherever you want. And then you, you just assemble it when you get there. A lot of guns will do this. AR-15s can do this very easily. You just pop. You just make sure your bolts forward, and you pop your pins and your gun is cut in half almost immediately. It takes up half the space. You put it in, and personally, in my opinion, that's the best way. I would prefer to have a gun case that transports it like that, which I have to get one. I'll have to do a video on that when I make a gun case for that. Because that is something I've been looking for, is making a smaller gun case for an AR, so you can transport a really good AR-15, but transport it in a you know much smaller configuration. More compact, we'll say. More compact. But anyway, back to the next part of this. They say fired at a chemical plant, nuclear facility, oil refinery, or any type of installation that could blow up or release deadly toxins. Okay, so here's where the FBI is going to dedicate another satellite to me. <laughs> because, because now I'm going to go to that really dark part of my brain, which, you know, thinks like a terrorist. Um, honestly, let's, let's take a look at this real quick, okay? 50 caliber... Let's just go with a Barrett. I mean, just a Barrett, uh, which is the most popular 50 cal out there. You're talking 30 something thousand plus dollars for a, a rifle. That's not the ammo. That's not the max. That's not even the scope. The scope is going to run you another $30,000. Okay, or at least three grand. For the scope that you would need to make this thing effective. You're, you're just buying the rifle. That's not the scope. That's not the ammo. That's not the mag. You might get one mag with it. Now, ammunition is going to run you anywhere. I think the last time I looked, it was like three bucks a round for one of these things. It's expensive. Now, to make that even worse... The rounds you would need to actually do damage, like they're they're insinuating here, hitting like an oil refinery and blowing it up, because that would be the softest target. You would need what is called an armor-piercing incendiary, meaning it's a round with a heart with a a uh, armor-piercing tip on it, but the tip also doubles as a detonator, which acts almost like a time fuse system. So when the round goes in to your volatile chemical that you want to blow up. My screen's trying to, my phone's trying to go in sleep mode. But when you hit that round where you're trying to make it blow up, 
the incendiary round activates after it's inside and then blows it up. Mythbusters did this. They fired every single... They tried to blow up a gas tank. Just a regular uh, LP gas tank that you buy for your barbecue grill. Uh, and there's a problem with this. One, the LP not only has a really good set of steel, but there's also this thing of the pressure inside of the gas tank pushing out against the metal. So when you fire a bullet, what a bullet that would normally punch through that steel, or at least crack it and go through it, just makes a small dent in it. Because it's actually not only pushing against its, the metal, but it's also pushing against the air pressure inside of it. And the air pressure is several thousand pounds per square inch at sometimes, if you've got a pressurized one. Some, of, some LP bottles don't pressurize up. But they use like a pressurized one, trying to blow it up. So you get done with that nonsense, trying to trying to hit that. It doesn't actually work the way you want it to. So they eventually they moved up to like 50 cal. Well, they penetrated with a 50 cal. But it did not do the damage that they were expecting. It just popped a hole in it and just, you know, pressurized gas starts leaking out of the dadgum tank. So then, <laughs> so then they finally turned around and they got an armor-piercing incendiary, which, like I said, it detonates inside of whatever it is you're shooting at. Now, the problem is armor-piercing incendiaries are considered destructive devices. They're explosives, which are set to so many more background checks than just your average rifle. And that also comes into play, your average rifle also. You're still going to have to go through a background check. So, I mean, imagine this situation. Muhammad Maidal and Muhammad Advil and Muhammad Tylenol go in there and they say, Oh, ah, we want all uh, four 50 cals and all of 50 cal armor piercing ammunition with explosive tip that you've got. We have one million dollars because that's what it's going to take to arm all three of these idiots to do anything. Okay. You're talking probably well over a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars just to get. I mean, and that might, that doesn't include permitting. You're going to have to pay tax stamps on probably every single round that you're getting to get the explosive ammunition. Guy behind the counter is going to say, yeah, hang on, ATF? And he's going to use this code phrase that you know you're fucked. Oh, ATF, you have to come down and confirm that in person? Okay. <laughs> Just like, what that mean? that's code for? We're bringing a whole truckload of guys. We're bringing a whole truckload of dudes armed with weapons and body armor. We're gonna, we found some terrorists. We're going to take them down. Yeah, it's going to be that kind of situation. Now, take that same amount of money. And like I said, this is, like I said, the oil refinery is probably your easiest target to hit because they'll have large tanks out there that are exposed. Most chemical plants have tanks, and even oil refineries have water, have fire suppression systems to engage to prevent something like that. And also, blowing up an oil refinery really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. These, these facilities are usually kept far away from civilization, specifically for what they're going to do. This was something that was figured out back during the Civil War. The South, when they would make their gunpowder, their gunpowder facilities were separated in stages. You had to transport your uh, refine your material as you refined it from one facility to the next. The reason this was done was because raiders from southern states often lamented to the southern military that, hey, you know what, uh, it's really easy to blow up northern gunpowder stores because everything is so close together. You start a fire in one end of it, and by the time you get out of there, it's done blowed, It's done gone down the factory line and blowed everything up. <laughs> so, so the South, when they would build their gunpowder facilities, they would separate them out, and they would put several hundred feet between each facility. This prevented sabotage, but it also prevented, if one part of the facility caught fire, it did not spread to every other one. Now, all refineries are the same way. You don't want to destroy civilian populace, so you keep it away from civilian populations. Really, the only thing you're going to accomplish by blowing up a chemical plant or a oil facility is a slight dip in the stock market. That's all you're going to have really much of an effect on. And people have survived the recession nowadays. A small dip is nothing. <clears throat> in the age of coronavirus and recession generation, I mean, what have you really accomplished? As far as a nuclear plant's concerned... One thing this idiot who wrote this article is not considering here he is nuclear plants have a shit ton of concrete, steel, and lead, all of which 
will just soak up ammo. And it doesn't take much to soak up a 50 cal at times. Uh, I've heard stories of I've heard stories where they used to take clay red bricks over in Somalia and they'd stack them in angled inside of uh, what are those things? Technicals. Now, for those of you who don't know what a technical is, it's just a pickup truck with a 50 cal or some type of mounted, mounted weapon in the back of it. Uh, they would mount the, they would load them up with bricks, and there was actually some guys actually said it claimed it would actually stop 50 cal to a certain number of rounds. Because it, the brick would just absorb it. Clay brick is a lot different than concrete. Concrete is more stiff, and clay brick is more flexible. It'll actually flex a bit more, but it also powderizes and just kind of... It's like... It's it's basically ceramic, pretty much. You know ceramic plates that are put inside of body armor? You have an idea of what I'm talking about. So, firing at a nuclear facility, which probably is going to have close to 50, 60 feet of concrete, lead, and steel shielding to prevent radiation from getting out, it's very unlikely your tiny little 50 cal is going to do any damage. Now, as far as economics, how, how efficient, what, what would be the most effective means of doing this? And then, like I said, this is the part where what I'm talking about right now is what's going to earn me another FBI satellite. Uh, you're telling me you're going to go out there and you're going to spend $30,000 just on a rifle, risk a background check and getting caught as a terrorist, when you can go into any sporting goods store and buy a quarter of black powder explosive for about 30 bucks, which will probably make you three or four bombs, which are more than capable. And also another thing, this is something that they they don't talk about on here, is the type of target you're going to be going after. Terrorists usually go after soft targets, usually people. Their idea is to terrorize the populace into either voting a certain way or acting a certain way. They control them through fear, fear of killing them. You go after, honestly, these going after a nuclear facility or a chemical plant or an oil refinery, that would be more of a military target. Because taking out an oil refinery, uh, that could severely cripple an enemy force if they're in the middle of fighting. If you're attacking an enemy on their home front, oil refineries become a very nice target because unless you're wanting to keep those oil refineries, if you blow them up, then those guys kind of lose their ability to maintain their army. Most armies nowadays march on oil and food. That's what they march on. Uh, an army marches on a gas tank in its stomach, basically. If you can't feed it and give it gas, then it's not going to move. Used to, it was it marches on its stomach, and then vehicles, combustion engines came into play, and yeah, you need fuel now, too. But, like I said... It's $30,000 for a rifle and a risk of getting caught during the background check versus no background check and a quart of black powder explosives. Which, that's what black powder is. It's registered. It's the only real legal explosive you can actually get your hands on. You don't need a background check, and you're limited to 50 pounds of the stuff. You probably just need a pound of it to make an impressive bomb. And for those that are asking, well, I mean, how, how effective could black powder be as a bomb? Just look at the Boston Bombers. Okay, the Sanarvi brothers, all they use, the firework, and some people are going to say, oh, those are fireworks. That's what firework powder is. It's just black powder at different ratios. In fact, you probably could get more powerful stuff off the shelf than you could out of fireworks because fireworks are meant to have more flash and bang than push. There's a big difference there when you have push. Uh, pistol powder doesn't have the push of cannon powder, for instance, and you can buy both of them. You can buy canning powder by the keg. I think it's like hundred bucks. I haven't checked since then. Last time I'm saying it's hundred bucks because last time I checked it was like fifty, sixty dollars to buy a keg of the stuff. And I mean, you're talking a lot of powder. All right, uh, that could be way more devastating to a civilian population than a fifty cal rifle. Which, by the way, once you fire the fifty cal. Uh, the first round you fire, everyone's going to be everyone who's got a gun that's going to try and kill you is now moving towards your position. They're moving towards your gunfire. So really, 50 cows being used for terror, it doesn't make much sense, and it's not something we see a lot of. This is just someone who is looking for a dragon basically to slay, and they've settled on 50 cal for some reason, and now they're like, "Oh, 50 cal! It's like in the movies." 
where you see they shoot a plane and the plane just bursts into a massive fireball and people die and they are there it's it's horrible it won't it won't just kill your body the 50 cal kills the very soul why well, think of the souls of the children while we go out there and uh, abort babies after nine months anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this this is a bit of a longer video i try not to do these but there's just like i said they slammed a lot of stupid in this one little statement. It was just insane. <laughs> and I have to do a longer. You got you to gotta address all the stupid. And there's a lot of stupid here. <laughs> I mean, man. But anyway, tell me what y'all think in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell for notification. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys on the next video.